Hello, and welcome to the presentation. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the pre-award risk assessment that federal grantees undergo before officially receiving their grant award. You know, in the good old days of just a few years ago, if an organization received a federal grant, uh, they had a, a pre-award conference call with their program officer to go over their obligations, explain some of the grant management regulations. Maybe the, the program officer would ask some follow-up questions about the grantee's project, and then there'd be some paperwork to sign, and you'd be off to the races. Well, since the Uniform Guidance for Grant Management kicked in at the end of 2014, grantees now, when they score high enough to receive a grant award, they actually receive a conditional award. And then they have to undergo this pre-award risk assessment, which is just a fancy way of saying the feds want to do one last little double check to make sure that your organization has, well, the financial and organizational capacity to implement your project. So in this brief presentation, I'll walk through the assessment and how you can address each element in your applications. Uh, you know, in almost every federal application, there's an organizational capacity or management capacity section, and almost everything we're gonna talk about here can probably fit into that particular section. And some of the documentation examples that I'm going to walk through won't always be included in the application itself. Um, most of them are commonly submitted prior to the pre-award conference call. So I'm, I'm mentioning them here just to give you a little bit of a heads up so you can think about them as you craft your proposals. All right, let's get started. Okay, where's the forward button? All right, here we go. So the first thing they'll look at, <clears throat> excuse me, is your financial stability. Some of the points you might address in your application include your financial history, uh, whether you have grant funded or fee-based programs and your cash flow, your development efforts, uh, talk about, you know, your annual events, whether you have annual or capital campaigns, other grants you receive, uh, major donors or sponsors. Talk about uh, the board's involvement with fundraising. What percentage of members contribute uh, cash in addition to their time helping the organization? Uh, your funding mix. What percentage of revenue do you receive from donations, private grants, public grants, uh, public service contracts, if you have any, events, campaigns, et cetera? And then talk about uh, your success sustaining other programs after initial funding ends. Uh, you, might, um, you might talk about you know, your history of starting new programs and then discussing how after other funding ends, you found other ways to support the project. So you, you want the funding agency to know that you have a track record of sustainability. Now, keep in mind, you don't need to address every point in the suggested application responses. Just pick the ones that are most appropriate for each application you complete the points here are just designed to spark ideas if the notice of funding opportunity instructions uh, aren't very clear. Oh, and also the examples of documentation are not, not all inclusive. So not everything will be required by the agency. And conversely, the agency might request documents not listed here. So be prepared for that as well. Let's see, where are we? Let's go to, aha, 
quality management systems is another another key point the feds are going to look at. So in your application, you might want to describe your existing organizational policies, procedures, and internal controls when they were first put in place and how often they're reviewed and how they're aligned with the uniform guidance. If it's one thing, the feds like to see structure and controls. History of performance. If you can, talk about your past federal grant experience. And if you have a past federal grant experience, make sure you provide the grant names, the dates, um, the award numbers, the project titles, any information that will help the, the funding agency uh, locate you know, your past records in their system. Describe your experience spending federal funds or non-federal funds if you've never had a federal grant. You just want to make sure uh, the reviewers know that you have a, a system and procedures in place to first quickly get a new program up and running, and second, to keep the program operational through the life of the grant. Most people have never undergone a federal audit, so this will likely not apply to you. If you have undergone a federal audit, make sure you describe, you know, how that how that turned out. Uh, give them the audit number. They should be able to find that in their system, but just you know, be upfront. Most most times, this is going to relate. This section here will relate to the standard annual third party audits that cities, counties, school districts, and nonprofits go through um, either through an independent CPA or through, you know, a state level office for public agencies. So just describe the results of, of any uh, annual audits and, uh, and that should be good. The ability to implement is just kind of a, it's a, a broad term. This is going to be the overall impression the feds get of your organization after they review everything that's in your application and all of the supplemental documents that you turn in either in the appendix of your application or after you receive a conditional award and they request more documents from you. So most of the information here will already be covered. You should be good to go. Uh, by the time you reach the conditional award phase, the agency will likely just ask some, you know, clarifying questions uh, to get more information about what you wrote in pr your proposal. Um, and then you'll you know, hammer out, you know, like I said earlier, hammer out some last minute details and they'll make a decision uh, whether or not you are going to get the green light or if they're going to put some conditions on your award. And let's talk about that too. So, <clears throat> excuse me. If, if everything looks good, according to their review, they'll green light your project, uh, have you sign the award notice and then you'll you'll be off and running if however something you know is a little bit of a, a red flag for them they might put uh, conditions on your grant award and when it says conditions for high risk grantees uh, don't read too much into that at this point because you're either you know when you're a federal grantee you're either high risk or not high risk um so it's, it's a kind of a binary proposition. Uh, it just sounds worse than it really is. Anyway, so based on the results uh, of the pre-award risk assessment, an awarding, uh, an awarding agency can place, you know, these conditions on your award 
and the most common include reimbursement payments. So the government normally provides funds to grantees in advance of their expenses. With this condition, the grantees are reimbursed uh, after the expenses are incurred. The other most common uh, form of a condition is additional project monitoring. So most grants require one or two progress reports per year. The feds can request up to uh, four, four progress reports per year under these high risk conditions. And again, if you're considered high risk, you know, at this early, at this early stage, don't worry about it. It's really not that big of a deal. It's just a few extra hurdles to jump over. But uh, over time, the high-risk conditions can eventually be lifted. So don't, don't sweat it. If you happen to get into, into this category, you'll be fine. Okay, <laughs> that's all I have. Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate the time that you spent here. Hope you found it worthwhile. If you have any questions, please email me through my website or reach out on social media. I am here to help you. If you found this useful, give it a like or a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment. I love the feedback. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future presentations. Thanks. See you next time.